In this lesson, we will explain the concept of activation energy, and we will label an energy diagram with reactants, products, enthalpy of the forward and reverse reactions, activation energy of the forward and reverse reactions, and the activated complex or transition species. Activation energy is the energy needed to get a reaction started. If you're a morning person, you probably have a pretty low activation energy for getting out of bed. If you're not a morning person, you probably have a very high activation energy for getting out of bed. Both groups of people tend to start and end with the same amount of energy. It's just that hump you have to overcome in order to get out of bed and get started. The activation energy is the height of that hump. So someone who isn't a morning person would have a very small activation energy, and someone who is not a morning person would have a very large activation energy. And the activation energy always starts from the reactants to the top of the peak in the middle, where we have the activated complex or the transition species. Let's first look at this curve as a forward reaction. We have our activation energy marked from the previous slide. For the forward reaction, the reactants are on the left side of the curve, and the products are on the right side of the curve. The activated complex is present at the peak of the hump in the middle for the activation energy. What we can also figure out from this is the enthalpy or the change in energy of the reaction. The value of the energy of the products minus the value of the energy of the reactants to get the enthalpy of the reaction. Notice that the enthalpy of the reaction is the same regardless of the activation energy. For this example, delta H will be less than zero because the products are around 30 and the reactants are around 50. So 30 minus 50 will result in a negative number. We can also use the same reaction curve, but consider the reverse reaction. In this case, we're starting on the right side of the curve, so treating the right side as our reactants, the left side is our products, and what's present at the peak in the middle is the activated complex or transition species. In this case, because we're starting on the right side of the curve, the activation energy is different because it always starts from the reactants and goes to the peak of the activated complex. So we have a different activation energy for this when we're going in the reverse reaction. The magnitude of delta H will be the same but in this case it will be products minus reactants, so delta H will be greater than zero. Notice the difference in the curves for an exothermic versus an endothermic reaction. Look at the relative height of the left and right sides of the curve for an exothermic reaction which is given on the left and an endothermic reaction which is given on the right. For an exothermic reaction, the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. For an endothermic reaction, the energy of the products is greater than the energy of the reactants.